This is a very rare item. There are only two other libraries in the world that we know to have a copy of this. And more importantly, it's also a very moving object. It's a pamphlet defending slavery. And we have the first edition, which was published in 1788, without the author's name in it. But when it came out again a year later, it was attributed to Gilbert Franklin. Franklin was a man who ran sugar estates in the Caribbean. And he was a member of the Society of West India Merchants and Planters. And he's responding here mainly to what he's been reading and hearing about the new abolitionist movement back in Britain. He refers in the text to the society met in the old jury, meaning Thomas Clarkson's anti-slavery committee, which was founded in a bookstore and print shop in uh, number two George Yard in London in May 1787. Um, now Franklin is convinced that slavery is natural, that it's always existed and always will, and that it's in no way contrary to the will of God. He thinks slaves wouldn't know what to do with freedom. He calls abolitionism an attempt to cram liberty down the throats of people who are incapable of digesting it. And he's thoroughly annoyed that Clarkson and his friends are spreading stories about the cruelty of slavery, so he wants to set out what he says is the truth about how well slaves are treated in the West Indies. For instance, he claims slaves are well housed and clothed, their health is cared for, they're extremely well fed, according to him. Their relation to their master is like that of a child to its parents. Their work isn't excessive, especially for children and breeding women. And when slaves have to be punished, well, he says, flagellations are inflicted with so much care as rarely to disable the offender from work. Because, you see, as Franklin points out several times, the planters own the slaves and they would never damage their own property so badly that productive work would be hampered and profits diminished. Now, we know that other accounts of the conditions of slavery utterly undermine the assertions Franklin makes here, so some of this material is quite difficult to read. Franklin's constant claim is that slaves on the plantations of Jamaica are far better off than soldiers, peasants, labourers or the distressed poor of Britain. Of the abolitionists, he says... If they are actuated by the true spirit of Christianity, they will begin by alleviating the fate of their own poor as far as may be possible before they trouble themselves about us. So this is a text that's deeply concerned with contemporary ideas about liberty and self-government that really gripped the late 18th century. And I'm a professor of French, so I can't help noticing that it was written in the year before the French Revolution. And one reason Franklin's account is so moving is that it reminds us how few people in his age knew what it was like to have freedom. But what's even more touching than the contents of this pamphlet is what we know about it as an object. This first edition was published by the printers Strooper and Preston of Harbour Street, Kingston. And one of the things we know about printers in Kingston at the time is that several of them had slaves. An inventory of Strooper and Preston several years after the publication of Franklin's tract shows two, Tom, valued at £90, and Chelsea, valued at 20 We don't know if it was Tom and Chelsea who printed Franklin's work, or what they might have thought of it, whether they would have recognised his portrayal of kindly masters and grateful, well-fed slaves, nor indeed if they lived to see abolition, which came along 20 years after the campaign began, in another print shop at number two George Yard, London, perhaps in some ways not so terribly different from their own. <laughs>